Today we're gonna do the breakdown of how it's done. The kind of craftsmanship that went into the digital production was one of the most labor intensive of any projects I've worked on. If you wear GCBS, you want to stand out. Actually at the end, my mind was GCBS. 24-7. Something so boundary pushing. This idea that maybe casting could be fluid, that there should be many different body types. We were looking at all kinds of different black hairstyles. It was so magnificent. That was the first time I've seen someone try um, a virtual fashion show. That was probably the most challenging to make. I was like really trying to do something different. We might as well like fulfill all these fantasies that we never get to normally do. Started as a game, turned it out into a nightmare. It all started because I was playing games so bad. I was doing uh, Animal Crossing on my Nintendo, so basically I forgot about everything for two weeks. And then I said, I want to do a video game or something that is like a video game. That this could be, like most of the things I do at GCDS is because I really want to create something or enjoy or experiment something new. We started Googling game engineer. Finally found Emblematic. They're the best, honestly. They've been, they turned out to be the best to do this project with because they knew exactly where they could arrive and what they could do and the limits of it all. You know, when you're dealing with a visionary like Giuliano, they're going to have some vision throughout the project that sometimes maybe you couldn't see at the start. The kind of craftsmanship that went into the digital production was one of the most labor intensive of any projects I've worked on. My name is Charlie. I also worked as a producer on the project and helped with directorial choices, sort of helping uh, maintain a consistent direction and look across all of the artists around the world we employed. So I was a producer on the project along with Charlie. Um, so a lot of what I was doing was just kind of coordinating all our various partners. You know, we had teams from all over the world, China, Brazil, Australia, Spain, so it was kind of making sure everyone was working in tandem um, to make this something really special. The lack of sleep that my team got making that was kind of nuts. And at some point, we were like five models away from the final editing of this video. And uh, Noni texted us, crash, crash, crash. The computer is melting. And we were pushing the computer so hard, one of them just melted down. One of them is dead and in my office now. Uh, and we were down to the last renders, and we were also trying to take the pictures that were going to Vogue. Well, you know, I went to bed because that was it. The computers were doing the rendering, they were spitting it out. And two in the morning, poor Charlie's hammering on my door, because of course I'm not answering my phone. And the photographs are coming in pixelated. I think her husband thought I was completely insane. He was like, why are you here? <laughs> I know, it was nuts, but it's something we'll laugh about forever. Can you tell me what, what is the planet we see in the beginning and where, where we are going? If I'm putting out there a world, I want it to create it and be my, I want my reflection of what is inside of me. So I imagine this melted flourish world where everyone is accepted. And I said, let's make a Christmas bowl, basically. This job, this work started with the COVID and the first lockdown in Milan because we were one of the first to have this long lockdown. As everyone else, I just wanted to go somewhere else. I was like, where, where can we go? Well, like, let's go out of this world. Let's go to planet uh, GCDS. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> let's do a new place. Who is on the first row? Can you tell us? Yes, all of my friends. I just said, how can I party with all my friends and bring them to the same room. And so I said, okay, I'll let, I'll let's digitalize all my friends. So I started from Gilda and Georgia from the Attico, Amina, were all Milan kids, so they were like growing up with me. And there's Chiara Ferrani. Chiara Ferrani with the uh, Fedez, yes, of course. And then Dua and Anvar came. Then I had Rise of Flower, my friends, Nikita Dragoon. All people that will usually come to my show. That was also an interesting experience. For, for me, it was my first time working with like the representation of 12 different people. There was a lot of back and forth as to like, oh, the nose is not quite right. The eyes are too big, make the eyes 5% smaller. And so of course you had to work with these people's representation to make sure that they felt comfortable and okay with their digital avatars. Started as a game, turned it out into a nightmare. That was probably the most challenging to make because that top, um 
because the way the 3D works, it's all flat. Having that crochet type of um, material was actually quite difficult to replicate in that particular program. So that was um, a bit of a challenge. So I had to sort of manipulate the textures for it to make it pop out and look look real, if that makes sense. They had to adapt the 3D of this to the model and avoid the problem that they might be walking and then the, the body pops out of the clothes. This dress was a nightmare because these are four different type of knitwear. So you had to do the braids first, then you do the, do the this, then there's jacquard. Basically I create the garment and dress it up in 3D. So with this program there are two screens. The one's got your pattern side where you make all your patterns and you tell it where to stitch things. Yeah. And then in the 3D window you place it as if you were in real life. You place this that part of the pattern there. And then you click a button essentially to simulate it in for a real world garment and it would simulate the cloth as if it was real. And it will start walking and the garment will react and simulate around that around the, the body as it walks. It seems like magic to me. And they did it so quickly and they made the, the clothes like move exactly as they would move. It was really amazing. Ooh, they did a really great job. But yeah, crochet 3D. <laughs> he must have hated me. All the crochet that we put in. There were some things that are very important uh, to be able to change on the fly during a show, like how a model might carry a bag. That would take us a week to fix virtually. So basically in the show we had a lot of swinging things because sometimes the uh, I think it's what make an accessory fun or cool or entertaining for a show. But when you do this, in real life, it just moved by itself. It's animated by uh, upper life, let's say so. When you do this in a CGI moment, you have to recreate the swinging left and right for each and one of them. But this, of course, takes data away from your room, so you have to just be really careful on how many things are swinging in your show. So what they did, because that was like a height of lockdown, no one could go anywhere. So they actually just shipped me like a giant folder with all of the looks, all of the fabrics, all the sketches. And they sent me like a little kit with pens and paper and like post-it notes and stuff. And then I like cut everything out and put it together the same way I would if I was there, but just on like paper dolls. And it's nice because actually like you can kind of see everything better in a way. Sometimes when you're there in real life, there's just clothes everywhere and like shoes coming late and <laughs> everything is like all over the place sometimes. So with the, everything in paper, I'm like, wow, I can just sit, focus and do this. So I put like an outfit together and I put all the accessories and then I divided it into sections. So like the first section should be, I think, like hippie swimwear. Yes, they always do like really fun, cute swimsuits. And for me... Every time I see it, I just get inspired and I'm like, let's do a swimsuit section because they're so interesting and unique and cute and oftentimes they become really iconic. We always style it in sections as you would in any show, like you want to tell a story from beginning to end. So we started off with this like cute, sexy swimwear, a little bit hippie, grungy. Then we went into this sort of like a country, like a Vegas country girl in Mars like at a casino. It was like that kind of mashup. I went back to all my childhood cartoons. So I watched Futurama and all the, the, the episodes that were up in the sky of everything. Like literally I watched Star Trek and uh, all, all the sci-fi movie. And I thought that the cool things about all of this movie was that they were bringing different races together. Not only different colors, because now inclusivity in our world is just about colors or uh, races. Like, why don't we do a ball? We throw a ball where everyone is invited. Cartoons, uh, aliens, and like weird creatures, and everyone is, uh, is, in, is invited. For Giuliano, it just should be fun. Yeah, and cute, and... Um playful and maybe sexy, you know, and just sort of over the top. And I love that about him. And then with the aliens, myself, Erin and Sid were having like a big conversation back and forth, like designing all these characters, like sending references and stuff. So like Erin would draw like the makeup and then Sid would imagine like a hair of that character. And then, yeah, it was really cool. Tell me. There's my little, that's my eyeball creature. 
<laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> I love that idea that there was no face, just an eyeball hanging. And the fact that they were able to do that. I mean, I created some pretty wild characters, actually. Yeah. Isn't yeah. that sick? <laughs> it's so cool. I mean, that was another thing, too, with Anna. I love talking to Anna because she would say, like, um, like with the little lines on the face, she gave me the reference of Liquid Sky. I don't know if you know that 80s film back in the day. There's some amazing scenes where the people have their the faces painted and they're in like a club and it's just wild makeup, like a stripe here. You have to look it up, Liquid Sky. I can't wait till we can have real aliens in the show one day. My name is Rhea Goldson. I'm a 3D modeler. A lot of the people working on the project before I got on didn't know how to do some of the harder hairstyles. So like the cornrows and the afro and the like, like you know, afro textured hairstyles. It was mostly just about taking my understanding of hair, specifically black hair, and then bringing that into 3D. And that was where like I was really able to shine in that department. So we were really like looking at some urban street fashion hairstyles, all kinds of different black hairstyles and a bunch of mood boards. Creating like the density of the hair was one thing that we had to try to like cheat, you know, because real hair has so many individual strands and you can't do that for 3D. So we had to create like a sphere on the base and then fill it up with curls because it was just too many poly polygons, too many tries, which is a really technical thing. Did you melt a computer or something? <laughs> yeah, my computer kept crashing at one point. It's so common, you know, you can't, the old, like you come to the conclusion of, you can't shake me down for what I don't have. And the computer is just not letting me open the file. So it's kind of like we're just sitting ducks until the computer decides it wants to work. At some point they were like, how you want the fit to be? How are they gonna walk? Do you want sexy or do you want them easy? Do you want them strut the catwalk or do you just want them to have an easy walk? What did you say? Sexy. <laughs> <laughs> He really um, was very on top of creating all the cool myriad of walks that we saw, um, which sometimes we would get notes from him like, this walk is too sexy, tone the hips down. Um, he would get very specific. And we even created different walks for different body types as well. So I think there was definitely a lot of vision coming from them as to how the walks contributed to their characters. Tell me about uh, you taking a bow. Showing me at the end showed everything was in my sort of world. I was bringing them all to my place. And that's the thing I like the most about the shows. You know, there's a lot of videos of him doing that movement from the end of shows. So we basically just based it off of um, GCDS previous show videos. That's it. <laughs> There's no huge tower behind you today. No. <laughs> that was really a mess to create the huge tower. Why? People go crazy for the finale. Like when you're in a show, if you have a good finale, a good music at the end, like even just if it doesn't match with the rest of the show, but it's exciting and people can cheer up, all of the clothes and all of the models together in a room couldn't work. Like the, the machine couldn't handle it. So we said, well, what are we gonna do? And I said, mm, let's do something that comes like a, a garage. I said, let's do a garage that comes from the down and goes up and you just have the model standing so they don't have to move. So basically you can cheat with the camera going right and left and the people are not gonna see that they are just standing in there. Our computers really struggled um, just to get the frames out because each frame you have to calculate for each model how are they standing? Where are their clothes? It took us three days of trying to shoot it, crashing, trying to find a way to recalculate, reshoot, crashed again. It was not a painless experience. <laughs> we were able to get some uh, real um, you know, cinematographers, folks who've worked in both film um, and really under understand digital cinematography. And believe it or not, they wear a physical rig with a camera on it that then tracks in the game engine. 
So when they're moving the cameras, right, like in their body and they're filming, they're literally filming in the physical world and it can match into the virtual world. So the finale was shot using this new technique where we could move cameras down the row and and shift lights around. Like the whole process was incredible. I had to speak with like 45 different people. To me, the vibe of the show was to be trippy and to, to recall all the things that would make me free. I love that it's so irreverent, playful, fun, humorous. It's for everybody. During the pandemic, it, it was the smartest thing I think you could do and it was so unique. Friends who like aren't normally into fashion and they're like, wow, I just watched this several times in a row. This was Absolutely great. All, all my life, I have to thank all the creative people around myself. And I've learned from each and one of them. I want to create GCDS as a really light place, because everything is heavy out there. So why, why you should go for another heavy fashion brand? 